that we've talked about both encoding and storage, we're going to launch into this third area of memory known as retrieval. And retrieval is a massive area of memory research because realistically, the only way we can truly measure memory is through retrieval. It's hard for us to ask if somebody encoded something without also asking if they can retrieve it. It's hard for us to ask if somebody has stored something without also asking if they have retrieved it. So retrieval is really the idea of bringing memories back into our consciousness. This really represents the bottleneck of the memory process. If you can't do this, we don't know what's happening in the other area. So it's really the part that we can see at the surface. Now that being said, there's lots of different types of retrieval that we have. We can have recall, recognition, and relearning. So for recall, this is when you have basically a blank canvas in front of you and you have to try and draw up a memory. We said, think of a field trip or think of your graduation or something of that nature. Can you bring it back to the surface? This is the idea that if you go into a police station and you want to uh, describe a criminal, can you describe enough that a portrait artist can make a portrait? Or if you are writing an exam and it's an it's an essay exam and somebody just asks the question, describe this issue. Can you bring forward and recall enough content on that issue to write an adequate essay? So recall is pretty hard. It requires pretty intense cognitive load. In comparison, recognition is less demanding. Recognition is the idea that instead of trying to draw a portrait of an offender, this is the idea when you visit the police, you get to pick them out from a police lineup. Can you recognize them? So this is the idea that the criminal is somewhere in the lineup, but there's lots of distractors. So can you recognize them? Or instead of an essay exam, it's a multiple choice exam. Can you recognize the correct answer? And this is especially the multiple choice exams that are very just memorization based or knowledge based uh, sort of definitions. Can you pick out the definition? This might also be, can you recognize what's on your grocery list? You lost your grocery list. Can you, can you remember what you're supposed to buy by walking or buy it on the grocery store? And then we have relearning. Relearning is the idea that you haven't really been rehearsing this, but in a new situation, can you put it together? Can you remember how to ride a bike, even though it's been decades? Can you remember how to apply a statistics formula in a new situation? So you're not recognizing the right answer in a multiple choice, uh, but it's if we give you the formula, can you use it? So not recalling the formula, not recognizing the answer, but if we give you the formula, can you use it? So a little bit of a different option there. These could also be the really, really applied multiple choice if you think about it. Can you think through enough to apply it? So, so recognition tends to be the easiest, recall tends to be the hardest, with relearning somewhere in the middle in terms of our cognitive load, depending on what you're trying to relearn. Now, when we think about retrieval, we find that sometimes retrieval is easier or more difficult depending on how we encoded it. If you recall, we talked about structural, phonemic, and semantic processing, and based on how you encoded it, it might be a lot easier to retrieve it if you semantically processed it because now there's more connections to it. In addition, it also depends on the context or your state of mind or your mood. And this refers to the encoding specificity principle. This is the idea that if you were studying and listening to music, and now you're in the test and you're trying to remember the answer, if you remember some of the songs that you listen to while you're studying, you can actually maybe start to play those songs in your head and all of a sudden come up with the answer. It's the idea that if you practice driving with the radio on versus the radio off and then you go for your driving test, you might do better or worse based on if you replicate or do the opposite of the situation where you learn to drive. It's the idea that we might recall some memories when we're happy and be unable to recall them when we're sad and vice versa. When we're sad, we might remember more depressing memories and more upsetting memories versus when we're happy, we might remember more optimistic memories. You also might remember things better at a certain time of day because of our habits and where we tend to find ourselves in those rhythms. Now, sometimes this does get taken out of context, although some studies have found that the encoding specificity principle does work when you are inhibited by certain substances, such as if you were studying and drinking alcohol, you might be connected or understand the material better when next time you're drinking socially. Although there is some studies that may find that, I do not recommend getting overly intoxicated on cannabis or alcohol in order to prepare for tests. That has been found to not be effective. So the encoding specificity principle is the idea that the state of our mind we're in when we learn something is the state of mind we're best in in order to recall it. 
as long as our mind is actually working and not overly intoxicated.